focus tonight. Vaccine maker AstraZeneca, which made Covishield in this country through Serum Institute, is in the eye of a storm after it admitted in court that a COVID-19 vaccine could lead to a rare side effect of blood clotting and low platelet count. This vaccine, remember, was sold in India as Covishield, administered to over 170 crore Indians during the pandemic. But what is this rare side effect and do Indians really have to reason to worry or are we being excessively alarmist? Joining me now are Dr. Shahid Jameel, a virologist, visiting professor. Uh, he's at the moment at Oxford University. Uh, and Dr. Heman Thakkar, consultant physician uh, in uh, Mumbai's top hospitals. Appreciate both of you joining us. Uh, let me come to you, uh, uh, Shahid Jameel, first. I want to understand the side effects that AstraZeneca is admitting now in court for the first time. How serious do you see them? The possibility of blood clotting that some say could even lead to heart attacks. Is it really as serious as it appears? Well, Rajdeep, uh, I have looked at the Telegraph report two days back that highlighted this for the first time. And uh, the key word there is rare side effects. Uh, so what does rare actually mean? And, and this is, by the way, not something new. We have known about this since 2021. Um, if you look at the, the, the data that World Health Organization put out in 2021, the risk of getting this complicated name, TTS, uh, thrombosis and thrombocytopenia, which essentially means blood clots or reduction in the levels of a type of cell which is uh, um, which prevents clotting so anyway the risk is one in 100000 for uh, uh, eu mm -hmm. the risk is about one in 250000 for the uk Unfortunately for India, we don't have uh, that data. So the point is that the risk is extremely low. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, they may have admitted it for the first time in court documents, but this is not new information. This has been available at the WHO website uh, for three years now. Dr. Thakkar? From from what we are hearing from Dr. Shai, the uh, Jamidi says, you know, the the risk is minimal of this having uh, of, of any blood clotting taking place. Have you had any experience of all your patients reporting this, sir? So I'd like to first clarify that this risk of vaccine induced thrombosis is within the first three months of getting the vaccine. The whole country has been vaccinated adequately. A large proportion has used Covishield. Now, you don't want to bolt the stable after the horse has run away because the chances of thrombosis are almost zero now because three months post-vaccination is done. So we really haven't seen, and as Dr. Jamil rightly said, 0.0006% of vaccinated individuals. And remember, every vaccine, why Covishield, the polio vaccine, the measles vaccine, all have this thrombocytosis problem every time they are given the vaccine. So I don't think we need to be alarmed. The vaccine era is over. Mm -hmm. India has been vaccinated. The chances of you now getting a delayed TTP is almost impossible. So I think I'm happy that Astra has openly announced it, but it was always there on their website. So I think this is now much ado about nothing. From what uh, uh, Dr. Jamin, you heard what Dr. Tucker said, no need to be alarmist. This fear that clotting could lead to heart attack is a very minimal risk that too within the first three to six months. And therefore it would be unfortunate uh, if anyone were to suggest this is something to be fearful about. Am I correct? Yes, absolutely. And let's look at how this sort of risk is computed. You know, if you were to look at clinical trials to find such risk, you will never find it. Because in a typical clinical trial for COVID vaccines, phase three trial, 
you had about 30,000 volunteers. Half of them received the vaccine and half of them got the placebo. Mm -hmm. So essentially means about 15,000 people got the vaccine. You will never be able to compute a one in 100,000 risk when you are using 15,000 volunteers. It's just mathematically not possible. These things happen when millions of people get the vaccine once it's approved, then these very rare events keep popping up. As I have said earlier also, nothing in medicine is 100% effective or 100% safe. We go by risk versus benefit, and clearly in this case, benefits far outweigh the risk. Uh, benefits far outweigh the risk. Therefore, Dr. Thakkar, should I, uh, should I say that all those who've had Covishield doses two years ago, uh, completely safe. Uh, we've had some reports of some people complaining of long COVID, of suggesting that they, maybe they're, if they've had a heart ailment, it could have been induced by the vaccine, or do you believe that could be just the fallout of the disease and not the vaccine, and we need to make that distinction? I think, as Dr. Jamil said, look at the risk-reward ratio. There was emergency authorization given to the vaccine because amongst the ghost of COVID, we had nothing to give the patient. We had nothing to protect ourselves with. So we gave the vaccine. And I think this such infinitesimally small percentages should not now be given a hanger to hang somebody's coat on because we all know that the COVID virus pramifasi was thrombogenic. It stimulated clotting. It stimulated aggregation of platelets and heart attacks and strokes. So which one caused it, nobody knows. But a lot of people post-COVID virus had thromboaggregatory problems. I think AstraZeneca's revelation is now being blown out of proportion. None of us need to worry because the era of vaccination is over. Mm -hmm. Nobody is adequately talking about a guideline for boosters. And every vaccine has side effects. More so the emergency authorizations once. So look at the benefit that you got. Don't okay. look at your class, the little empty that it was. Dr. Thakkar, Dr. Jamil, two very fine voices who have clearly suggested, let's not get alarmist. The benefits outweigh the risks when it came to Covishield AstraZeneca. Thank you both very much for joining me here on the show tonight.